joined by Fife's finest, Jim Leishman. How you doing, Jim? I'm doing great, Ross. Thanks for the invite on. Nah, no, no bother at all. Thanks for coming on. Uh, just want to go back to the start. What football was like for you growing up? Oh, uh, that every day. Every day you like to see uh, that. But that's all we had. It, 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 my dad was a coal miner, my mum worked in the factory, so we didn't have much uh, um, extras, you know, like say, playing golf was never, uh, no chance it was too expensive and we didn't have any computers or anything, so football, eh? Played football. Sunday, every Sunday, all the people around Brucefield and Loch Gelly uh, would go down the park and play, it was Brucefield Celtic, played Brucefield Rangers, <laughs> uh, honestly, and every Sunday it was like playing the Champions League final every Sunday down the park. It was great and hey, my brother was 16, I was 12 and I was playing with him, the older boys, and that's where I got taught how to look that, after myself. That toughened you up a wee bit. Ah, it was great, great stuff, loved it every minute. And who would you say your biggest influences growing up were? Oh yeah, boy. I think uh, there was two guys in, in our area uh, one was Bertie Muller, who played for Celtic and Rangers, and then he went to Aberdeen. Uh, we Bertie Muller was a winger, and we used to see him uh, running around the park getting fit because he was professional sometimes, and he would say, oh, we'd stop and pass the ball and show us how to put then he would move on, eh? And another guy was a hero in, our, uh, uh, in Loch Gelly, was a guy called Ian Porterfield. Ian Porterfield scored a winning goal in uh, Wembley for Sunderland. Right. Uh, he, he scored, he's a hero, a legend in Sunderland, who became the manager of Trinidad and Tobago, Chelsea, Aberdeen. So he was always uh, somebody that you looked up to, you know, because he had achieved, he had achieved something there. Eh? And um, you signed for Dunfermline at the age of 14? I, uh, I was playing down the park and a guy called Andy Young, who was again a famous man, Andy Young played for Wraith Rovers, it was Young, McNaught and Lay, that was their three midfielders. And Andy was a Dunfermline scout, the chief scout of Dunfermline, and he came along to the house and he sat down and asked my mum and dad if I could sign for Dunfermline. I signed at 14, as an S form, a schoolboy form, and I thought, hey, this is great. And what they did then, it was, it was interesting, was because an S form at that time, six months after you leave school, you could sign for somebody else after six months. Right. So it wasn't really, it was supposed to be a tie-in to stop the English teams taking you down there, eh? But they gave you, they, they put £5 a week into the bank for you. So if I signed professional, that fi I got all the £5 that, eh? So that was an incentive, eh? Ah, big incentive to, at that well, time. Well, at so that time it was, Rossi. And um, how would you say that youth development compares now to back then? I think everybody says, uh, you know, even when I was 16, 17, oh, the football's not as good now as it was when I played. And, you know, I've said that it's not as good now as uh, when, when I played, etc. I, I think there was more really talented players at that time. For me, for instance, to sign an S form for Dunfermline, I, I, I had to be in the Scottish Schoolboy squad. Right. You know, I had to be at that standard that was one of the best players, and I hope that this doesn't sound big headed, but you know, I got selected for the Scottish Schoolboys team, and they, Dunfermline were a big team at, at that time. They were they had just won the Scottish Cup, and then the semi final of the European Cup Winners' Cup, 1969, 41 games in Europe at that time, and I was getting an opportunity to sign. So I felt at that time there was more gifted players. Uh, where now, I, I didn't totally agree with how they're getting coached now, you know, it's, right, go here, go there, go there. Nobody told that to me, uh, say that to me, eh? I was just, I just learned that, what you do. So natural abilities maybe coached out of players now? I, I think some of them. Some players do have natural ability, but uh, I'd like to see more players getting the freedom, right, go go and play. Express yourself. Uh, do, what you, do what you're good at and, and let's see. Uh, they don't worry about, uh, they, let's see if they can handle you rather than you worrying about them, eh? I think it's maybe too tactical now. The tactics are certainly different, eh? It, when, when I started off, it was, uh, we were starting, that was, uh, when I started as a schoolboy, it was 3 5 2, right? Mm -hmm. 3 5 2, that was it. Two, two wingers, and, and 
and then then it started at four four two was the the, the more solid tactics. Eh? Whereas now, Christ, they've got diamonds and they've got whatever. Eh? They've never, got never see anyone playing four four two now. Eh? Well, it was good enough for Alec Ferguson. That's true, aye. Yeah, and he he won a few trophies playing four four two. Eh? Just a few. Yeah, aye. That's it. Eh? But no, it, you know, you've got what is I can't. I get I get confused. Eh? I, George McNeil, when we were at Livingston, George, I, I used to do my team talks, and I say to George, right, George. I, I'm playing four at the back. I'm playing uh, four in midfield, George. How many have I got left? <laughs> George, George used to joke, two, you've only got two left. <laughs> so we used to have a laugh about it. We never wrote that. Tactics. Hey, tactics could be null and void at quarter past two, three Aye. if you're two and a half doing it. And uh, how did it come about making your debut for your beloved Dunfermline? Oh, it was a. Uh, it was amazing. I was in. Willie McLean was a. Uh, George Muller, I'm telling a lie, apologies. Alec Wright, it was a manager, and Jim McLean's brother, Willie McLean, was assistant manager. And I'm in the house, uh, this is no word of lie, I'm in the house, and Willie McLean come, come along to the house. He says, uh, I used to get called Don Juan, right? That was my nickname, Don Juan. He says, Right, Don Juan, you're in the first team squad tomorrow. And I was like, that, wow, against the Air United, be at East End for I think, 10 o'clock or something. And then on the on the telly, the STV Sports or something, whatever it was, uh, it came along and uh, uh, on the telly says, Don uh, Fellman set to uh, give Jim Leishman, youngster Jim Leishman, a start tomorrow against the Air United. And proud, proud moment for oh, you and your family. Oh, it was at that time to go to Air. It was too far away from my mum and dad, so they didn't get to see it. Eh? And, and and you were talking about tactics there before, and we played a WM formation that day. And W was you had two wide players when you're attacking, the two wide players would attack. When you lost possession, you would go to an M to be to defend. Mm -hmm. And I think it was it was either a German or a Dutch formation, and the manager had been uh, across. Uh, uh, to to look at different coaches and things uh, or tactical things. Uh. Learned that over there. But he did, I. Uh, so we tried it. We drew a uh, we drew one one. Uh. Drew and, uh, and it was great, great for me. I was only seventeen year old uh, to play with the big boys. Uh. How did you do on the debut? Uh, uh, it was a bit nerve wrong. Uh, the, the manager said I did all right, but. Uh, it's no like when you're a wee bit more experienced, when you're a wee bit more experienced, you've got a wee bit more confidence to do a wee bit more, eh? Aye. You were getting the ball and you wanted to make sure you didn't give it away to the opposition. And, uh, you know, you were not you were making sure you didn't make mistakes or, or trying not to make mistakes. But it was a great learning curve at that time. Some great players you were playing against. And we've got to talk about your goal at Rangers at Ibrox. <sighs> talk us through that last unfairman player to score a winner at Ibrox. 1970, 1972. I'll give you the quote because I read it every morning when I get out for my breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> in the eight first, eight the first minute, inside the box, uh, youngster Leishman beat two players before slamming the ball past McCloy's uh, in off the post, uh, land it off the net, something like that. It's amazing. Now, I was getting twelve pound a week, right at that time, twelve pound a week, and the manager gave me a tenner after the game. Going up the tunnel, he gave me a ten pound note. I'm like this, so I think he must have had a bet on it. The game, eh? And he gave me ten. Come on, that's mental. Really Twelve pound a week. Now. My pals were getting something like four pound fifty in the dockyard or doing the pit as apprentices, and I was getting twelve pound a week and five pound in the reserve team. Seventeen pound a week. He, he meant it. Night out in Dunfermline with that tenner. That three weeks. Three weeks. <laughs> it was three, no, it was great. No, uh, no what I can't mind. I can't mind what I did with it, but uh, 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 it was just amazing. The money meant nothing. It meant nothing, the money. It was scoring. Uh, I, uh, this iconic stadium where the best players in the world have played, and there you, you're scoring that goal, 17 year old, and you're slamming it, and you say to yourself. And I can mind after it, because my pal, had driven, I, I bought a car with my sign and on for you a mini 
DUS 2 c a Mini Cooper. And my pal drove my mum, I think my dad was working with him, and my older brother. And he was a mad Celtic supporter, fanatical Celtic supporter. And after that, when I scored a goal, I'm behind the goals, giving it the old aeroplane, yeah. <laughs> And coming up the main stand looking for my mum, eh? And all I could see was my brother in the stand, standing up going like that. And I say to myself, oh, I hope he's no got his Celtic scarf on. <laughs> <laughs> He'll get her doing. But yeah. great, that's something. It's still, it's still, I, all the great teams that Dunfermline's had, and the Stunners won, they've won at Parkhead two or three times, and they bother. They, I was the last manager to beat Celtic at, at Parkhead. Great Gordon Strachan was the manager, so I didn't know how long ago that was. And uh, but no, we've never never beat Rangers since 1972. It's a crazy start, that. It, it's, it's, I, I have a laugh and a joke about it, uh, you know, when I talk. Man, it goes, you scored at Ibrox. Was that the winner? Came in there. All the top striker, strikers that don't fell. Uh, many goals you scored this year? 20. Any Ibrox? No? <laughs> <laughs> you ever scored the winner at Ibrox? No one. But, and, and they just look at you. Shut up. <laughs> no, it's a great honour for me. That's amazing. You remember yeah. it like it was yesterday? Yesterday. They bowled up before it, going out in the park, and then getting it, and it was 4 3. And as it, the, 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 uh, the Rangers were playing a week or two weeks after it uh, in Barcelona against Moscow Dynamo and John Gregg was the only player that night that wasn't playing in the European Cup Winners Cup final. He was protecting it, they were, he was, had a wee injury and he was trying to... So it, was, it wasn't as if it was the reserve team they put out or that. Eh? Quality, quality side there. Oh, Peter McCloy, Derek Johnson, Colin Steen, Wally Henderson, Wally Johnson, Wally Matheson, Dave, Dave Smith. European Player of the Year, Dave Smith, Colin Jackson, uh, Sandy Jardin instead of, uh, sorry, Alec Muller instead of uh, uh, John Gregg and Alec MacDonald, I could name them all. Would you say you're better than all of them then since you beat them then? Oh, I was, I was a top man, eh? 100%. Eh? Oh yeah, I could walk along Logella High Street and... You see days, Jack. Uh, uh, <laughs> it was good fun. But you've got to cherish these mem memories, Ross, because they get taken away from you so easy. You've mm -hmm. got all the things that you, you achieve in football, all the things I achieved at Dunfermline, all the things that I achieved at Livingston, you've got to cherish them, because eh? you worked so hard to get them. Eh? It's so difficult to achieve that, whether it's a championship, whether it's a winning goal, whether it's a cup final, you've got to cherish that. That is part of why you start it as a 14 year old. That is part of it, eh? that's part of your dream. Football's quite unforgiving in that way, that it just Pulls that away for you. Yeah, there's so many guys get a job for a week, a year, sorry, a year, two years, and they're out and finished. You know, I was lucky. I was uh, the first time. I was seven years at Dunfermline the first time, and then I went to Livingston. And it was, was it seven seasons, nine seasons? I mm -hmm. kind of mind. Great, great, I love it. So then you spend seven years at Dunfermline uh -huh. um, as a player, and move on to Cowdenbeath. Why leave Dunfermline? I was doing great, Ross, uh, at 20. I was um, getting I was getting scouted by Liverpool by a guy called Jeff Twentyman who was Bill Shankly's uh, chief scout. Right. And the boy Andy Young, who signed me for Dunfermline at 14, had moved to Leeds, Leeds United with Don Revy, and he was the chief Scottish scout for Leeds United. And he, both of them wanted me to go and... Uh, uh, um, to sign for their teams, eh? Fifty thousand pounds at that time, nineteen seventy-four, and I broke my leg, compound fracture. I uh, broke it my leg in three places, and uh, I thought, ah, oh, right, it's a leg break. I'll get back, but never. Seventeen months I was out, but I come back wasn't as good. I was never going to achieve uh, what I was going to possibly achieve before my leg break, and the opportunity just passed me by, eh? And uh, I was playing in the Fermanagh's reserve team, a new manager come in, he was getting the same players. I was looking for a signing on fee, I was getting married, and uh, so with my signing, I think I got a thousand quid, 
So I bought an engagement ring for 900 and a set of golf clubs for 100. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I did. That's the honest truth. Can't forget the golf clubs. Oh, then. no, no. I was thinking about buying 900 pound golf clubs, but I, 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 I can't. 100 pound <laughs> engagement ring. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking if I got away with that. But that was what it was. It was a, 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 a bad, bad injury. Never got back. And those moves just kind of pass you by. You, what can you do? Oh, okay, Sam's really? team's, team's just any touch after no. a big injury like that. Eh? Well, I wasn't good enough after that, Ross, to be honest. Mm -hmm. eh? I was never going to. I knew myself once I, I trained it. I went from 11 stone 6 to 13 stone 5, right? Mm -hmm. For just being lazy. And a guy, Ralph Brand, became the, the assistant manager. And Ra Ralph Brand, a la uh, the Rangers legend, eh? Uh, and uh, he got a grip of me and says, Hey, you get the finger out. And I was training three times a day then, eh? and that's, that was it. Eh? So the career, career ended up um, getting cut short. Finished, really. I played, I, I played another five games or something for Dunfermline. Then I played three months at Cowdenbeath, and I left. And I stopped playing football for two years. But a story, right? Ralph Brand, being losing weight. I was losing weight, and I was getting doing and getting doing and getting doing. Scotland play England or uh, Wembley next week. We were going to Dune, right? We were going to Dune uh, to Wembley. That, that was a, the game. The, uh, Scotland got beat 5-1 at Wembley. So we were going to Dune, me and my pals, in a Mackay's van hire with the mattresses in the back. That was it. And we drove, stopped at Blackpool. And Ralph Brand, before I left on the Thursday morning, he pinned my weight on the wall. East End Park. He says, Don Juan, if you come back heavier than that, I'm finding you a week's wages. <laughs> and did like, you? Ah. Well, I'm going to tell you. I went doing Blackpool. All oh, the boys, they're clubbing in Blackpool, eh? And I, I'm going to go. I'm like that. Nah, he's a pink, he's a pink. <laughs> <laughs> so, and we got, then on, on the Friday night, I was at Abbey Road with the Beatles, the Abbey Road. I was staying with a pal. Uh, a girlfriend from Perth, she was doing there. I stayed at her bit uh, on the, the Friday, so we went clubbing with that, so it was all. Choo -choo -choo. Then Saturday, after it, we uh, were at Brixton after the game, got up 5 1, so the English ones were all happy, so there was no trouble. <laughs> so on the coming home on the Sunday night, in the morning, I phoned Ralph, I said, Ralph, you do me a favour, is it okay to come in the afternoon? Because I've just got home at four o'clock in the morning. Which was a wee bit of a white lie, yeah. He says, I need bother. He says, two o'clock. So I went into Carnegie Baths, into the saunas, right? I put my tracksuit on, the black bin bag, and I was shadow boxing there. <laughs> Sweat pouring out me, pouring out me. I, was, I went back, I was the same weight, eh? I was the same weight. Then he had me around the track and I was fainting there, I couldn't breathe up. I had no water in my system, I was dehydrated. Oh, oh Ralph, I'm knackered, the journey's killed me. I, was, I went back to my bed and that was me. <laughs> so that's how I avoided that. The uh, bite's caught up with you. That's how I, uh, but see, that's, that's when I knew I was diligent. So see, when the career was cut short, was that by your choice or more forced? <laughs> what, what happened to me, Ross, right? Uh, when I left Cowdenbeath, right, I was at them filming Cowdenbeath, uh, I signed for a team called Glen Rothis, and I got £100, right, for signing. I was the first £100 player in five junior football, honestly, to get a signing. And I just didn't like it, eh? Just didn't like it. I was getting, uh, they were playing me in midfield, the manager and I disagreed. I said, I'm not, I can't, I can't do what I used to do. He says, Christ me. if I could play in midfield, I'd be so senior. No, so I left. I left them and two years I just played the golf, eh? Playing really well at the golf, didn't really enjoy it. And then uh, I was in Dunfermline one day, I can't remember what I was doing, but I was sitting having a beer. And a guy who played with St. Johnson, a guy called Freddie Aiken, a winger, great player. And what a logie. And I knew the boys, eh? And I just sat and we're having a pint with them. And he says, Look, what about, what about coming in and playing for Oakley Juniors? And I hadn't played for two years, eh? I says, no, oh, I've finished, I'm playing the golf now. He says, come on. And the next day, the manager of Oakley come up to the house and says, Tim, what have you given us a hand out for no Oakley? I said, I've not played for two years. He says, come on, you'll be all right. 
So say, I'll come up on Thursday. Tuesday, I ran for Logelli to Kelty. To my fiance says, my, my, my wife says, at that time, and I ran up. <sighs> Kelty, eh? It was about five mile. And I come up, I says, <sighs> And then, went to Thursday for a wee kick about. Played on the Saturday, they won 6 2 on the Saturday. And then, yeah, I, I played. We won the five junior league two, two, two years in the trot, Oakley Juniors. And then, for there, went up to Kelty Hertz as the manager, stopped playing at, at, at Oakley because my, my injury kept swelling up, my ankle kept swelling up where I broke my leg and whatever, eh? so I couldn't, I couldn't keep going, I was only, I was only 25 year old. And then appointed Dunfermline manager at the no, no for Kelty, no for Kelty Hearts, I went to Cowden Beath at 26 as assistant manager to a guy called Andy Rowland, played with Dundee United. He was a manager and uh, I went as assistant manager for about four months. He resigned, new manager come in, I left and uh, I got asked to go to Kelly. I, I, the family then as a youth coach, reserve team coach. Seeming so the career was cut short, the job was wanting to get into coaching or management or? No, I didn't really, didn't really think about it. Eh? No. It wasn't until I got the Oakley job uh, that I started playing and coaching, playing and coaching with the manager there and winning that I got a wee and then Kelly had just went for amateurs to uh, to junior in the first year and they asked me they asked me to be the manager eh? I got f my wages were five pound worth of scratch gears <laughs> you need 25 pence and, and they said to me Jim five pounds worth it. if you win it then you keep the money <laughs> I was here a season never won a thing eh? <laughs> I think they were scanning it and the and the Reese prayed my four Capri we took it and re-sprayed it. And it wasn't until about four years ago that I, I was told that it went into the, the bus garage at Kelty. And it was a bus garage red. <laughs> the, boy for the, the spray painter for the buses. <laughs> that's, what, that's my car. <laughs> but it was great. That was me starting off, eh? And then for Kelty, that is when I went to the Fernand Youth Team, under 18s. And then when Pat Stanton was uh, Pat Stanton was the manager uh, a Dunfermline at the time. So when you became the Dunfermline manager, who was your sort of biggest influences at that point in management? Andy Young still. Andy Young was still a, a great in influence on me. He was always my, my, one of my main football mentors. Eh? My dad was a great influence on me. My mum and dad, but mainly my dad, because he was a miner and he had good beliefs. Eh? Good strong beliefs. and. Uh, you know, real discipline my dad had. I didn't mean, we, we asked him, he had, no, no, mind your manners, mind this, and do that, do it right, do it properly. And, uh, but Andy Young, football-wise, in fact, when I got the job at the firm, 29-year-old, I uh, appointed Andy Young as my, my, my reserve team manager. And you know, do you know the skids? The firm in big country, no, I don't Skids so, no. were the first punk group in uh, in Scotland. Right. Uh, um, Fuels of Fire. Oh, they. Well, Richard Jobson was the lead singer, and I pointed his brother John Jobson, who played with Meadowbank. Meadowbank, he was a legend at Meadowbank, and I actually asked him uh, if he was want to come to to help me with the coaching, but he was he couldn't do it. Uh, and I thought there was a connection here, eh? And um, uh, who was it? Pat Stanton left, and Tom Forsyth took over. I was a youth coach. Tom Forsyth came in, promoted to me the reserve team coach. Then Tom Forsyth got the sack, and uh, I was I was put in charge temporarily three games, and then I got the job. You be, that's pretty crazy. Twenty nine. Twenty nine. Eh? Twenty nine year old. You wouldn't see that now, would you? Really? I was unbelievable. Unbelievable. You might come and say to myself, the Fernand when I team now were thirty fourth out of thirty eight teams. I says, I can't be any worse. That's true. Again, I can't get a f I can take them doing what four plate <laughs> And my first I, I I went in to the dressing room, a lot of the boys mind are older than me that are still playing there. And I says, Right lads, we're thirty fourth top <laughs> <laughs> It's the truth. Was that not a nice way to say, hey, come on? 
positive mindset to have. Pos- positive, but it's also telling the other story. Hey, we're fourth of the bottom here. Thirty fourth thing, and the other boys are all laughing. That's happening, but it's telling you something here, guys. These are all supposed to be professional. We are a team like them, Fellner Athletic here. So, been the living in them, out. I started building the main team. And did you feel at that point you were ready to be a manager after the, like your other coaching experiences? I, uh, at the start, it was difficult because eh? I was I was trying to get players that were going to improve the team. But I, I only had a thousand pounds to spend mm-hmm. at Dunfermline, fifteen hundred pounds. So you're just buying good journeyman, eh? So I wasn't getting a chance to because they had all spent all the money, twenty six players. Christ, and they're th- fourth bottom. Yeah. So I just I had a look around. And my first full year, we lost out promotion in the last day. My first year. Then the next year, that's when I thought, hey, you're, you're starting to get in the hang of it. You're getting good players and you, you've got an idea. You've got an eye for good players. And you're, every time you bring it in, it's strengthening. You're getting stronger and stronger. So my second season... We won the second division championship because there was no third division at the time, Premier first and second. Then the next year, we got promotion again. Amazing. For 34th, and then you're in the Premier League for the first time. It's crazy. I got relegated because there were three, they, were, they changed that to the Premier League, uh, the, the old 10 teams at that time. Mm-hmm. So we finished second bottom, which normally would keep you up. Uh, and we, we got put, then we won it again. Then I went straight back up. Brilliant. So by the time I was 35, I'd won four promotions with Don Fellow. 35 year old. That's madness. Eh? Three, uh, two as a champions, and two, one as a player, uh, one promotion as a player when I was 18, and the other three as a manager. I was only 35 year old. And Don Fellow as a club at that point started basically growing massively, didn't they? In terms of. Well, My first game, Ross, in charge at Dunfermline against Queen of the South at East End. Guess how many fans were in the stadium? How many? Have a guess. Go on. 1,500. 675. 600 at East End Park. 50 of them were comps. Great. That's how low, that's how, That's what the people thought of their team. They ended up going up to what? The th- was it third highest? Third, third highest in Scotland. In Nobody. No bad. Even though they have, a, they have a, they do have a good fan base, but it was nothing like 3, that. Three thousand yeah. again, three thousand. But I was getting thirteen thousand. I'm not talking about the firm. You were sixteen thousand with the offer, seventeen thousand with the offer. But I was getting thirteen thousand every week because we are winning. Walking down the hall, be thrown to see the leash with ease. It's <laughs> great, man. Great, amazing. I loved that. So, uh, like I say, massive rise of Dunfermline. Um, yeah. And you end up, was it the board wanted you out? Yeah. And then with the, the 4,000 fans marching for you? Well, Stuart Adamson. He, he, Stuart Adamson was a big country. He was a lead singer and lead. They, they marched for the Dunfermline right through the high street, at right to East End, four, four and a half thousand folk. Uh, heartbreaking it was, Ross. I can imagine it must have been so Heartbreaking it was. Uh, I had no experience for Europe. I said, you've got to qualify for it first. And we had a fight with the assistant manager at the time. Eh? He wanted the job and what is this? And the new board coming in, some of them went with him and that. So they offered me, they offered me the general manager's job. And I turned it down. Eh? I said, no, I'm not ready for that. I'm not going to be a general manager. Christ, I was only, I was a 40, I was in 40. I was in 40 year old, 38 year old or something. You want me to be the general manager? I should be just starting off. As a manager, this should be my first year. Never mind what I've already done. And uh, no, so I just says no, no, thank you. And that was me. I left. It's a bit of a strange decision for the board, though, considering how. I think the, uh, I can't speak for them. But phew, the next manager, that boy, had come in. He only lasted six months. And then they bend them. The next manager come in, and uh, he got them to the cup. He got them to the cup final, right? With, uh, with the players that I'd signed, eh? and that's what broke my heart a wee bit because that, that that was my team. That should I'd have been you. Yeah, but again, history. You, 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 I've never sat in a corner, Ross, and said, right, okay, 
pumped and hawed and that. I says, come on. I says, we are, get on with it. And then um, you had spells at Montrose mm-hmm. um, and Vanessa, so on. And Vanessa first, Ross. And Vanessa, aye. And I Ross. did well there, Ross. Aye. I did well at Inverness. It was the Highland League. And I said, who me to sit here waiting on a team come and ask me to be their manager? Who? I have no right to sit here and do that. And in fact, I got an interview for the East Fife job, the chairman, Jim Baxter. He phoned me up and says, Jim, why have you not applied for the East Fife job? I says, Mr. Baxter, you know what I've done, you know where I stay. I says, come down on Sunday, right? So, so I went down on Sunday, I did a wee bit of homework about the youth development, the players coming through and everything. So I sat and all the board are there and the rest, I thought they were The chairman of East Fife, Jim Baxter, after it, he says, Jim, brilliant, brilliant. Uh, uh, come on, jump in the car. So we took him along to the garage in, in Methyl. Right, you'll get a choice of these cars here. You'll get a car. If you maybe twice a week, maybe do a wee bit of commercial work as well. And that'll help pay your wages and whatever. Oh, this is brilliant. This is right. We've got a meeting on Monday. Start on Wednesday. All right. Okay, I'll, I'll phone you. So I'm going to tell my pals. I said, boys, I start on Wednesday. <laughs> He's five. So they say, oh, we'll get a wee bet then, we'll get a wee bet. <laughs> ah, I am starting away. We well, Monday night, Sky Sports, Archie's back. Steve Archibald has now been given the East Fife <laughs> job. I'm still waiting to this day for a phone call for East Fife. He's, he's dead now, God bless him. Uh, to see Jim, uh, sorry, we're not giving you the job, we're still waiting. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah boy. Funny, funny football. And uh, I'm at their dinner, Jimmy, a, a legend, Jimmy Bonthron, Aberdeen, East Fife, whatever. He phoned me up, asked me to help him with his testimonial. East Fife versus Man United. Because Alec Ferguson, Aberdeen, Jimmy Bontron, etc. The connection was there. I said, I'll help you, Jimmy. And I'm doing a, I'm doing a speech for him. Doing it at Bayview. And I, I'm first on my feet. I says, gentlemen, ladies, I don't know if I'm the East Fife manager or not. <laughs> but if I am, it's the only team I ever wanted to manage, <laughs> right? If I'm not these faith manager, because Steve Arch was in the audience and he's pissing us all off me. Uh, uh, he'd been in the job for about two months or three months. If I'm not the East Fife manager, ladies and gentlemen, I used to love coming here and hump you right up you. <laughs> <laughs> you can get, up. <laughs> get it right up you. Amazing. So, that was it, that was it. But, uh, so I went to uh, Inverness, great. Lost my first two games, won the next ten. It was three points a win then. Uh, the team of the month, I wasn't the manager of the month then. Team of the month, three three months in the trot. And the, the Inverness folk, couldn't you believe it, eh? The same boys. And two, I just tweaked this and tweaked that. And then, and then I got offered the Montrose job. Didn't they do well at Montrose? No. No. My job that was. I don't know, I don't know. I look at a good chairman, the chairman was brilliant. Um, a guy called Brian Keith, Bonacore Glass, uh, really uh, uh, looked after his and, and encouraged everyone. But I couldn't get a team on the I, I started a youth development team and they got to the semi final of the BP Youth Cup, right? The Hearts beat them in the semi final, I think 6 0 or 7 0, I can't remember, but Hearts had. You know, really good players. Yeah. Okay, and they, they, uh, they won it actually, and it was your first time. But we got to the the semi final, brilliant, and I got the the first team to the semi final of the B and Q Cup. We got beat down at Morton in uh, uh, extra time, and uh, but I couldn't get them winning in the league. Couldn't get them winning, and I kept saying it's because you've got the Aberdeen boys, you've got the the Dundee and Tayside boys, and then you've got the Fife and Lothians. So you can get the Fife and Lothians boys working well with they boys, and then you get that uh, with they boys, and etc. etc. I couldn't get it. I signed the wrong players, my fault, and I resigned. Went up to see the chairman. He wanted me to stay at the end of the, the season. I then make my mind up and says, No, I'm not enjoying it. If I didn't enjoy it, what's the point? If I didn't enjoy it, I'm cheating you. And I'm not going to cheat you because you've been really fair with me. And so, no, I'll give you t- the new manager can come in, have a look at what he's got, and then start next season fresh. And then you move to Rosyth. 
recreation? Well, I stopped again. Eh? I, I became a, a, a teacher at uh, Fife College in Dunfermline Lauder College, teaching sports management, uh, SVQ Sports Manager Level 2. And uh, then I got offered the Rosyth job. Uh, and the most successful Rosyth manager ever. Three cup finals and three defeats. <coughs> Hilly Beath, Hilly Beath Hawthorne beat three, three cup finals. But was again, that was that yeah. success to them. It was success getting to the cup finals, eh? Three in the one season, they couldn't believe it. And then, then luckily, I got the Meadowbank Thistle Livingston job for Rosyth. What was that like going there? Meadowbank, I, I thought it was great. I'm the last manager at Meadowbank Thistle and the first manager at Livingston. Very proud of that. Very the proud of that fact. The fact that they were changing to Livingston ever make you want to leave or were you just excited to be part of it? The only, le the only reason I went was because of the new project at Livingston, doing at Almondville. I got taken through and the, the, there was a... Uh, there was no grass on the park and the stadium was getting built. It was all the steel erecting and uh, they were flattening the park out and putting the topsoil on to, to grow the grass, etc. And I, I said, Livingston Football Club. There's no other teams in West Lothian. Well, there's Livingston Thistle, the amateurs and Aye. whatever, whatever, eh? But there's no other. This is amazing, man. You've got... Edinburgh and you've got Glasgow, you've got Motherwell Falk around there, but there's nothing. What a prospect this is. No brainer. And what was the journey like through the lower leagues? Brilliant. See some of the play uh, I learned for Dunfermline. Because at Dunfermline I won the second division, got promotion again, Premier League. And I took some of the guys for the bottom league right to the Premier League. And we got uh, relegated. And I learned for that, some of the guys, great they were, honestly, great. They hardly lost a game in the, the, the lower, in the, the second and first. They were brilliant. But I learned, right, you've got to make a decision now, are they good enough to keep you there? And, and that's it. But so when I went to, to, to Livingston, when we won the third division, the second division, then we went right up. It was great. Great boys at the start. Stuart Williamson, captain. Tam Graham, centre half, Aga Cookers, that's what he did in the morning, hump Aga Cookers all round, fitting them and getting them, and then we go and play for Livingston in the afternoon in the third division. Uh, uh, Jason Young, mm -hmm. Lee Bailey, uh, who's a full back, Mark Duffy, uh, who was right back, Craig, Craig Smart, my fireman now, that was your, that was your back four. And then you had Grant, uh, Grant McMartin. Grant was a winger. We got him for Dundee. And, uh, who else was that? He was a left winger. I can't remember. But some. Did you take a lot of that team through the whole leagues with you? No, no, no. no. I learned for the first time when I say they went up. They went up to the next league, and they, a lot of them got promotion again. Uh, then it started to change to the Fernandez, the Martin Andrews. Oh, they boys started to, I started to bring them in, eh? And, and it, was a, the, it was the Christmas, January transfer window, that's when I started bring, to prepare them to go up, eh? How did you manage to get boys like that in, like David Fernandez, Marvin Andrews? David Fernandez was in part of the, the, the Airdrie, Steve Archer was trying to bring them in, sell them on, bring them in, sell them on. And we were looking for a goalie. Right, so I went up to Tanadice to see uh, to see Airdrie play Dundee United, and I was looking for Sanchez Broto, Sanchez the goalie. I, was, I went up to see him, and this wee boy pew, pew, kept getting one on one with the goalie. Say, eh? I said, who is this boy? But he didn't score. He got sent off. But I said, and I went back and I said to I said to Davy Hay, and I said to uh, Dominic Keane, I says, hey, I'm telling you, that's a player. Brought us, aye, good goalie, you know, and he proved to be a good goalie. I says, but this we strike, I'm telling you. So we signed him at 5 to 12 on the transfer window deadline, the two of them. 
because we're going to go to Kilmarnock, eh? and that five to twelve, five minutes to go. We got the forums zoomed through, uh, faxed through to the SFA. And ends up going for a million quid, Fernandez. One point two. Mm -hmm. No money. Crazy. Eh? Wish I was on. Wish I was on ten percent. I would have been <laughs> retiring early. No. <laughs> no. 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 You know, uh, it was a guy called Jorge Jorge Amor, I think, or Jorge. No, Amor. He played with Barcelona. Aye, ah, that's him. Right, but Jorge was another guy, the agent for Bahi, that got the players. Eh? He got us the players. Great. Amazing. So you end up getting promoted to the SPL? First division, eh, the Premier. Which is unbelievable coming from... For Ante Thistle. Bottom, aye, I was going to say the bottom divisions. For Ante Thistle. Yeah. I can mind the ga first game, I can mind it if it was yesterday. Hearts. David Fernandez scored his first goal in the Premier League and the last goal that season. Kino scored the other goal. Colin Cameron scored for Hearts. You remind me that like it was yesterday. Yeah? It was yesterday. We took them to the airport hotel. The odd team. We went to the airport hotel, and we were woken up at I think about three o'clock, half past three in the morning, with a fire alarm. And we thought, who's done this? Someone's done this, eh? And we came in standing outside, in, in my jock shop, my 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 my, my best Hugo bosses. You know what I mean? <laughs> and they we were outside. A fire alarm. Then it was a false alarm. Went back to your beds and up, and went into and we, we, we played. And you couldn't get a seat. Couldn't get a seat. And it, that was our first, and following the first division championship flag that day. Absolutely brilliant. And then end up qualifying for Europe as well. Third top. Loads of great games though. You think yeah? Uh, I'll give you a start. Played Hearts four times that year, and never got beat once. Won them all, didn't draw, twice at East End, that first game, at East End, sorry, apologies, Almond Vale, we won our first game 2-1, the last game we won 3-2 to finish third top. That's like unthinkable now finishing third. SPL, Celtic, Rangers, Livingston, qualify for Europe. Oh. I'm like this, Chris, and but this is fantastic. Well done, boys, eh? Because it was a team effort, eh? Was it Jim Leishman, Davy Hay, Jim Leishman, John Robertson, Alan Preston, eh, all the other staff, but the players without players performing, <coughs> you can prepare them Monday to Friday, but if they didn't perform on a Saturday, you're hopeless. Nobody, nobody's bothered. You're not bothered. If you if you didn't see your team winning on a Saturday, you're not caring what we're doing Monday. You might grump, ah, oh, they didn't get trained right, or they're no doing this, no doing that. But we were. we're, we're the staff were too good not to prepare them right. Eh? What would you say your main strength was as a manager, so obviously taking Livingston for build bottom division all the way up to the top? How how did you how did you do it? <sighs> how did we do? I just think good players, eh? signing good players at the right time. You mentioned Martin Andrews, Stephen Tosh, uh, Alec Burns, the striker, the wee striker for the throw. 25 grand I pay for them, the three of them. <laughs> but there's got to be something that you think that you're, you're strongest, sorry. I think, telling you the truth, I think getting you to be better than what you are, that wee bit extra, getting that out of you. That, that sounds harsh, eh? What I just said to you, they're getting you to be better than what you are. Eh? It's not where you are. Right? It's not what you're doing. It's where you can go, Ross. And who you can be. Do you understand what I'm saying there? Aye. Right? You might be thinking right now, I'm, right, that's me. But think, where can I go? Right? What can I do to achieve that? And that makes a difference. I think it's more the mentality type thing. I, I, that's what I was good at, eh? the mental thing. Right, you know, getting your mindset, getting your mindset. Honesty meetings with the boys, we tell them. Stuart Lovell, eh, for the third, Stuart Lovell's a great captain for Livingston. Great captain, right? Rubio, 
Rubio helped Marvin Andrews. Rubio played for Real Madrid in the final of the Spanish Cup final when he was 19 year old. Pfft, think about that, Real Madrid. You it's know insane. what I mean? Sensational. Kino. Nobody knew him. Kino was the best midfielder in, that, in, in the Premier League at that time. In my mind. And the Premier League was stronger at that point than it is now. Well, you had the. Well, what is what you had all the Rangers boys and Martin O'Neill at Celtic. Eh? Mm -hmm. Celtic was the only team living since they didn't beat that year. And their team was a joke, wasn't it? Their team was a joke. No, that day Martin O'Neill they won the league. Ah, no, that's what I mean. It was amazing. Their team. Oh, aye. Oh, it was amazing. Aye, they Celtic beat Rangers at that time. We were about 15, 20 points. Then we were 20 points behind Rangers, you know what I mean? But we were the best of the rest, eh? Simply the best of the rest. <laughs> <laughs> so then, Imagine uh, that, Thoros. Imagine being third top living, Stan. Fat no, that would ne never, eh? happen, never happen again, really. Eh? Well, I mean, yeah, you never know, eh? You never know. Mm, you never know. Possibly. You never know. You never know, Ross. Didn't he ever say that? Not to me, anyway. <laughs> No, when you're the gaffer. No, no, you've always got to have that. So then... We set good targets, Ross, eh? Aye. But if I, I said to you, Ross, right now, we've just been promoted for the we're first division championship, we're going to the Premier League for the first time, what would your aim be? I think, naturally, it would be, uh, I think everyone would say, stay up. Second bottom. You've winning, you've been winning, and you've been winning. Why are you be sitting bottom? That's what. That's the message we get. Boys, we don't want to be sitting bottom. We're better than that. Look at the players. Look who we've got. You're playing against them. The thing is, you didn't fear them. Just didn't fear them. Go and show them what you can do, what we can do, which is more important. But as a team, Stuart Level, we had all the players come in. Half nine, phones out uh, uh, on the training field. Five to ten. No five past ten. Right. If you start the game. At five bar three, you could be one hand doing. Start at three. But that's what, and we go a discipline, eh? We go to discipline. It's a crazy mentality. You've got to be crazy. <laughs> You've got to be crazy to think you're going to beat all these institutions. Right, like Aberdeen. Dundee United. Hertz. Hibs. We never got beat off your Hibs that year. Never got beat off your Hibs. And we beat Hertz four times. That's 12 points. Hurts. If, you're away. if you're taking points off all the clubs as well, you finish third top. Exactly, that's it. Yeah, okay, that's a secret. Now you're switched on, Ross. <laughs> right, now I've got you. <laughs> and how would you say, like, how did it come about actually, well, leaving Livingston as manager anyway? Oh. Dominic wanted a change, eh? He wanted a change, and uh, he brought this guy in, this genius of Brazil. What's his name? What was his name? Massey Morsel. I can't remember his name. No, no one that you can. He was hopeless, <laughs> eh? He was hopeless. Then that's when I said, no, no, I'm no staying with this boy. I'm no staying with this boy, no. He was, Dominic was wanting me to help him through. No, no, no. No, 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 no. But why did he want you to help when you had all that success? No. This doesn't make sense. No, I, go, I went back in. Did I go back in after that? I think they were, they were building the extension at the time and Dominic wanted me to help with that and do all this. And I just says no. I think it was me or Davy he was going to go away eh? at that time and Davy, Davy didn't deserve that. He, Davy was great, the two years worked together brilliant, eh? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, Davy's outside the Premier League, Davy's only, he's won the first, he's won the Premier, he's won the Scottish Cup and he's won the League Cup. The League Cup with uh, Livingston and the Scottish and, and the, the the league with Celtic. Eh? So he was great. The tears we got great. So then I ended up going back to Dunfermline. I went no, but the boy was hopeless. Eh? Was he? Oh, I, 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 no, no, I could tell you loads of stories about. I came in my first time meeting him. And was in the boardroom and he he come out with a statement that he's got. He's got a system that would beat, could beat the old firm, eh? I mean, that's when I say to myself, this guy's a nutter, by the way. <laughs> and he was, was going, system? I said, well, the system, no, the system was, uh, you get the ball, eh? Pa, pa, 
Pa, pa, pa, pa. What the? What you? Is, is, is that a diamond? Is it a four four two three three five two? What? what, what? Ah, no, no. The, the, the ball, the ball. Pa, pa, pa. He bought a goalkeeping sand pit, right, for the goalies to train up at James Young High School. Never used that. Bob Parvis brought a, a JCB across, right, for Logelli, my pal of mine, and did this. I, I put all the sand in and never used that. Used to train with wee tennis balls. It's crazy, it's just no. I'm sorry, and I'm sorry to the boy. Oof. No, I hope so. So, back to them, Fairman. Back to them, Fairman. I went back. Uh, Gavin Masterton. Uh, I was uh, I was I was a guest at the Dunfermline Football Club at their their big uh, uh, dinner, and he says, "Ah, Jim, you belong over here." Oh, I says, "Right," and then they, then they phoned me after that. I said to Dominic, "Dominic, well, I'm going to save you wages here because that's just before administration, etc. Before the cup final." Mm -hmm. I've got, I says, "I'm going to go back." I says, "Jim, it's up to you." I went, I went back to Dunfermline as the job I got offered the first time, eh? but I was older then. Eh? I was starting to get a wee bit tired. Eh? I mm -hmm. was starting to get a wee bit tired because I'd been constantly eh? with Dunfermline, woof, with Livingston, woof. But can you, to do that, you didn't just saunter about. You've got to spend the time, you've got to spend the hours, you've got to get players, you've got to go or whatever. Eh? So I says, right, I'll go back. Eh? What, what, was, what did your role as general manager entail? Oh, none. <laughs> <laughs> no. That was just, a, I was a PR guy and I was I was doing things like, see, uh, Jimmy Calderwood was the manager in the film and he didn't want a director of football or that. You weren't going to go and Jimmy Calderwood wasn't going to answer to me or anybody, eh? So I just did that. When Jimmy left, I, got, I helped Davey get the job at the film and uh, Sadly, it didn't work out for DVA. It was just at that time, Gav Marston was the owner of the football club and John Yorkson was the chairman. Davy would say, Right, I'm wanting a player. John Yorkson's right, go and get that, spend this. And then Gav Marston said, No, we can't afford to do this. And so it was, that was, wasn't, it? wasn't it great. Did you enjoy it? general manager as no. much as manager. No. You seem you seem like the type of guy that you'd want to be kinda of in the middle of it all the time and uh, but be on the park and stuff. That that opportunity didn't come up until Davy left. Aye. Davy Davy he left. As I say, Davy but she said he's a me on his boy, you'll get in football, eh? Jim, it didn't work out. It's no work out for me. That these things happened. Yeah, I'll get settled up and I'll get going. And that's the truth. And uh it just just a, a lot of injuries, you got a lot of injuries, eh? Davy and then, then eh, as I say, Livingston beat them 2 nothing at Almondvale and eh, he got the sack on the Monday, not 10 hours on the Tuesday. And eh, it was great. And my mindset, I got them in. Life's a journey, I said, right? And your journey, you start, you're born. You go along a straight line, the average person, then you D. Right? Simple. It's what you do in that, that straight line. You can either come above it or go below it. You're in charge. Twice I went below it. That line. The first time was when I got the sack for Dunfermline. Hadn't been unemployed, they think he wanted to. Eh? And I felt rotten in it. And then the second time was when my wife died. Eh? And but the fit where you say to yourself, well, you blame everybody else, eh? You blame me, well, I was, oh, she did that, I was rid of him, I was rid But the, uh, then the second time when my missus died, I said, I, I can't help that. I couldn't help any more than I did. I'm not going to stay down here. I'm going to go back to that line and do what I can do. And do what I can do. And uh, that was it. I just got up with this positive attitude and, and uh, go on with it, eh? it was great. Okay. Set up the Mary Leishman Foundation, 1.1 million we've raised uh, for charity, just all volunteers, uh, there, again there's nobody on the staff or anything, we've not got anybody getting 
40 grand a year or that wages, it's just, we've helped so many people, eh? The director at Dunfermline now. Yep, well, I stopped, I stopped Ross, uh, at the management when my wife took ill. Uh, it was too much, you know, I was looking, trying to look after her and go back to the football, so uh, I just says no. Uh, and uh, we got beat, I think, on the Tuesday, four nothing for Hibs. And uh, I remember, before that, I kept them up the last three games. The next season, kept them again and, got, and took them to the League Cup final. You know, imagine that. I was, uh, the, imagine if you're a supporter of a football team, right? You support them, you get to play for them, you get to manage them, and you're walking out of Hamden. It's a dream. It's amazing. You know, and you didn't think about it at the time, it's just part of your job, getting them to the... And sadly, uh, we beat Livingston in the semi-final at Easter Road. A penalty, won nothing. I was at that game. Yeah, that was a... It wasn't a great game. It was great for me because we got to the final, eh? And uh, proud as punch when I walked out. Proud as punch as well, because I'm getting this in. When I, took, when I walked to in Vaduce, in Liechtenstein, I looked along the line and the tears come down my face. And I'm no shame to say that. This is a UEFA Cup game. I'm full of galley. My father was a coal miner. How, how is it me? And it wasn't just me I'm talking about. You know, again, Davy Hay and Robo and all the boys, everybody. But uh, uh, I was uh, the manager at the time. And I looked along the line and you see all the boys. And, phew, amazing. You've got to give yourself some credit. Well, I played my party. You've got to. It's a team game. Four memories to look back on. Oh, great, great, great. 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 Memories you'll have forever. Oh, forever. Forever in my life. Nobody can take away that. That's it. No, a true memory. Uh, so, uh, anyway, I, lost, uh, I left and uh, uh, the, uh, the League Cup final was just tremendous. And I, l I left and uh, they made me a director of the football club. And they, uh, I'm a director just now. No, no heavily involved as, as a director. You know, you've, you've got a with the chairman who's doing a great job and the other directors and that. But um, if you ask me anything about Dunfermline, you ask me anything about Livingston, I'll tell you. I'll what tell What's your role as a, Dun like as a Dunfermline director now? Uh, well, we, we've, we, we've, got a, we've got a say in who the new manager would be. We've got, you know, when players come in, we, we give the manager the budget. <laughs> and I, I do hospitality for them sometimes. Basically that's it, eh? I've not got a, you know, I'm not doing in the dressing room with the manager every morning or at the training field, that, that's his job, eh? I've had that honour and I've had that pleasure and I've had that joys and woes. Aye. I've had all that uh, and I got, uh, I got the chance to do it twice, eh? Three times actually, twice with Dunfermline and uh, a long spell, a long spell with uh, Livingston. Mm -hmm. And how, which is a exciting time for Dunfermline now with the uh, Takeover coming. I think it could be a, a, a exciting time. You know, they they own a, a third of the club just now, but they're going to invest a, later on when the time is right for them. And uh, if it goes right, and if we get some good players for abroad, some maybe good uh, German players or uh, players that have played at high standard, then some some players uh, for for Scotland or or down south or whatever. Yeah. Maybe time to see them firming back in the Premier Well, I hope so. That would be great. As I say, I've, I've had that joy. I've played in the top league. I've managed in the top league. Uh, Livingston and uh, uh, a I didn't play at Livingston. Though. But, you know what I mean? Yeah. Great. And, uh, well, can I get you on and they'll talk about your reappearance in the Scotland squad announcement. Ah, hey, hey. Uh, I signed a boy Davy Irons for Dunfermline for Clyde Bank, 75 grand, and his son, Lewis Irons, I don't know if you heard him on, he phoned us up and says, look Jim, he works with the, uh, the group, eh, that, that, that did it. Uh -huh. He says, Jim, can you get yourself a Anster, Anster, we call it Anster Fish Bar in the morning at half nine? I said, what if I were doing the Euros, eh? And uh, so I got all the information through in the morning, eh? And 
so that was it. It was funny because Robert is the guy who owns the fish shop. Nervous as anything, eh? And I'm calling my line was, Hi Robert! Hi Jim! What are you having today? Oh, my usual Robert, a fish supper! Uh, Jim, it's the Euros this year. What do you think? Chances? Oh, 100% Robert. John McGinn. John McGinn's the man for me. <laughs> he was like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> He had about 140 takes. <laughs> but 10 o'clock in the morning, you're getting an Einster bar for supper. Right out of the pan. Breakfast of champions. Oh, eh? yeah, beauty. <laughs> That's what I had. It was bro, right out of the pan. The chips were roasting, the fish was bro. <laughs> that was it. Good morning. Good morning. What are you thinking of Scotland's uh, chances at the Euros? Right now, they've got a chance. And uh, I'm not. They're not. I'm not going to say they're going to win the thing, but but they're they're, they're qualified. And all credit to Craig Brown. That record stood for for years. A different format then, and uh, you know different players, obviously. But hey, come on, come on. And then she me me being positive with Don Fellman and Livingston and talking about this. They say no, Scotland. We're going to get home. No, maybe hey, uh, let's get a go, guys. Get a go, man. Have a good go at it, see where you end up, eh? Yeah, I think the managers done excellent. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I think I think he was doing at large doing the coaching course, and I was I was on the same that same year, eh? And uh, so you go into the coaching badges quite early on, and he's done well, did well as a a coach, if that's his title, manager or coach. But uh, he's done well, and you give the man credit. I certainly I certainly do some of the. The results, eh? It's put put it in. Yeah, I'll be shouting them on anyway. Nah, we're all looking forward to it. Nah. Um, so on to your personal achievements. Oof. Being being awarded an MBE. My God, can you have? Unbelievable. Imagine that? Unbelievable. How Unbelievable, man. As I say to you, I keep saying my mum worked in a factory. My dad was a coal miner. Here's me. I'm getting a letter for. For uh, Buckingham Palace, can you, you see it on the, on the postal stamp right from Buckingham, Buckingham Palace? What's this? And you open it up and you, the, you get recommended to Her Majesty the Queen for an MBE, and if she accepts, or if you accept, uh, and you, you write, you say, oh, of course I do, and yeah, oh, great, you go do, you go to the palace. Amazing, man. My yeah. wife is here, my, my son and my daughter were down there and the big ballroom and then you're in this big room with Rembrandts and Van Goghs and and you say to yourself, wow, oh, unbelievable. I know. And then she pins it on you, eh? she pins this MBE on you and you say. That's you made it. Well, no really, that's not, it's, I, I wouldn't say I've made it, but, but uh, you say to yourself, this is another amazing experience. Doing it at the palace. You write poems as well, don't you? Hey, <laughs> I used to. Eh? But there's me and Nathan there Ross. There's a, a, I got a Great Scott Award through in Glasgow for for my achievements, and it was Chris Hoy, the, the three finalists: Chris Hoy, Mark Bowman, and Jim Lushman. And the big little girl lad comes through, and I says, "Oh, <laughs> that was another, that was another uh, aeroplane." But imagine that. Came the Chris Hoy, a legend, man, a, a Scottish legend, oh, Sir Chris Hoy. Sorry, mm -hmm. rightly so. What he's achieved and put cycling really, really up there, eh? But with, with the rest, because a lot of good cyclists in the UK, but he's oh, to win what he's won is great. And I was sports personality of the year. Uh, Nicholas Sturgeon presented the Great Scott Award, eh? Through in Glasgow, mm -hmm. and the sports personality of the year was Watty Smith. And, and, and great, eh? and I got a Radio Fourth Lifetime Achievement Award. Eh? Unbelievable! So th these are other things that I've, uh, I've done. Eh? And probably the Fife as well. The Kingdom, Ross. You like a Don't god. Be cheeky, <laughs> Ross. I want you to say that again. The Province of the, the Kingdom of Fife. The Kingdom of Fife. I they didn't hear you, Ross. The Province of the Kingdom of Fife. That's better. <laughs> you like a god there, there, aren't you? <laughs> eh? You like a god in Fife. <laughs> Maybe don't fell in a wee bit. Don't fell in a right. Maybe not doing it Kirkcaldy, no, no. <laughs> I still get chased out of Kirkcaldy. <laughs> <coughs> no, but uh, there's mere go uh, Ross, I, I've just I put my heart and soul into the Family Football Club. Eh? When I played, I played 
I wore uh, the badge on the sleeve and I tried my best and when I was manager I tried my best for the for for the players, the team and for the people. And that's I can honestly say to them all, I gave it my best shot for you. Twice. And uh, I think they appreciate that, eh? They appreciate the enjoyment I gave them. You carried that into eh, obviously being the provost and that as well. I, I was sitting in the house, uh, uh, Ross, right? I was sitting in the house. My son's got the house now, eh? And then Kelty Bridge. And the phone rang, I left it up. And I was winding them up, eh? Jim! Gordon here, right? <laughs> Gordon Brown, eh? Wraith Rover supporter. I says, Gordon who? The Prime Minister. Right. Oh, it's you, Gordon. How are you? Not? <laughs> and he asked me to be a councillor for Dunfermline, if I would stand as a local councillor. And I said no to him. I said, Gordon, I'm no a politician or that. He says, oh, you've been doing it for years, Jim. You've been doing it for years. I says, oh, it's different, Gordon. Eh? He says, no, 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 no. Come on. I said, I'll think about it. He said, I'll phone you next week. And he phoned me back to his credit. Went down to his house and I said, right, I'll do it. But if I didn't enjoy it, I'm out as quick as I'm in because there's no point. If I'm not enjoying it, I'll be, I'll be getting paid for nothing, for doing nothing because I'm not enjoying it. So I'll be, this is right, Jim, that's honest, this is right. So I got elected as a councillor on the the Friday, and two weeks later I'm the provost. I've never been to my first council meeting that I got made the provost, and I got re elected. So it's nine years I've done. I said, Provost, I've got another year to go and I got re-elected. I got a phone call the day they want me to stand again. Are they? No. Oh, that's good now, is it? Oh, no. Well, yes. It's really nice that you get appreciate. And the leader of Fife Council said, Jim, you've done a great job as a Provost. Come on, you've got to stand again. Eh? Great. Are you enjoying that? Uh, it's been great. A, a, a different career move, a different career path, but I've enjoyed it. Again, I've put my heart and soul into it because it's for the people of Fife. Anyway, I'm going to do the job and no, do my best. My father wouldn't have let me. My mother wouldn't have let me. You, if you've got that, you do it. Get on with it. So there's a lesson put everything into Every what you everything do. you do. You get an opportunity. You, life's about taking opportunities, boys. Eh? Oh, you young boys. You get an opportunity. Oh, maybe I maybe no. You, you. No. Maybe what to do it. If you're not to do that, didn't it, didn't it, leave it. But if you've got an opportunity you want to try and do, in, get it done. Give it all you've got. All you've got. Then you regret that. Then you're saying on Monday, oh, I should have done better last week. Football players used to come and say that to me. Gaffer, why, why, are, you, why are you playing with the second team? Because I've not got a third team, son. <laughs> <laughs> True. Right? And they used to come, oh, boss, I could have done better yesterday. What's good of that to me in the day? What, why are you telling me that you could have done better yesterday? What can I do about that? Tell me next week I'm going to do great in the morning. That's the difference. I always look forward. Yeah, no, when you're in the team, then they, then they come up on the Sunday and say, oh, I was hopeless yesterday. Because you're in charge. Then they say to me, oh, I wasn't feeling great. Well, d tell me, and you're not playing up at somebody in. You're in the team. Give it everything you've got. If you play bad, fine. I can accept that. I want up, whatever. But then they say you could have done better yesterday. That's crap. That's brilliant, Jim. Thanks a lot for coming on. Really appreciate okay. it. Okay. Top man. No, no. I had a great time at Livingston. You tell them all. It was a fantastic journey. I will do. Great experience in my life. Great. And I'd like to thank all the people for West Lothian. I was an incomer, remember? I was an incomer today, and they made me very welcome and great support. Sure, they'll appreciate that. I'll never ever forget, I'll never ever forget the big games down there, beating the big teams. The wee Levy, exactly. beating you. Bring it on! <laughs> right, boys, I'm going here. <laughs>